the last couple of days, we've seen some more of these social media hints being dropped by Miami staff members and coaches, the bat signals we call them, and people are getting impatient. Transfer portal, what's going on? Guys, I think it's about to heat up. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers who are here with us on Locked on Canes every single day. And yeah, the reason why I think finally, I know you guys are getting impatient because it's Wednesday now and bat signals started dropping on Monday. I I think we're going to be getting some good news or at least some news soon in the transfer portal because Miami just yesterday had a pair of big time visitors. To help me break it all down and to talk some 2024 recruiting as well, because there's always that going on, John Garcia Jr. is with us, Locked On Network recruiting expert. So, John, uh, on Tuesday night, they may still be here, uh, but Miami was hosting a couple of visitors, local guys who maybe are looking to make their way back down to South Florida. Let's start with Florida wide receiver Xavier Henderson, who I felt good enough to to drop a Dono ball on him. I, I think he's going to be a hurricane, a former Florida Gators wide receiver. How do you think that process is going for him now in the portal? Yeah, look, I'm all for the Florida Miami back and forth uh, recruiting portal. All of it is is fun as as a uh, native Floridian. But yeah, this was a, a surprising deal. This was Florida's leading receiver last year, even though he missed a couple games. He was the most targeted receiver in the spring game the other day, Um, supposedly had crazy scrimmage numbers at Florida this spring. So I think a lot of folks were surprised to see him jump in the portal. Digging around a little bit, there's kind of this sense of Henderson's always had the talent, you know, 400 meter champion in Florida, 6'3", NFL bloodlines with with his older brother, CJ, a, a former first rounder, always a high expectation, but maybe he hadn't lived up to it. Uh, at the collegiate level. So there's kind of this sense that it's got to be now, it's got to be this year. And with Florida, you know, going through a a quarterback battle after the Anthony Richardson departure, I I think there was some instability there. So naturally he hits the portal and and immediately uh, I get texts, Hey, this has got to be Miami, right? Cause you do (laughs) have quarterback stability, a new system that is going to be very pass friendly wide receiver friendly um henderson has a body type at 6-3 that really doesn't exist at least from a proven standpoint on this current miami hurricane roster uh and then on top of it all miami guy columbus guy right i mean if there's a high school where you feel good about miami grabbing players past and present it's got to be columbus where where crystal ball mirabal of course uh, came from even alonzo highsmith is is a crystal uh, a columbus guy so as soon as we heard that, we thought, okay, yeah, Miami's going to be in really good shape here. And then immediately a visit is set up, a multi-day visit uh, to South Florida, coming back home, as as you said, which we know has been a priority deal for Mario Cristobal since the day he took the job. Factor in Kevin Beard, who I think it, we're starting to realize is, is going to really be a game changer from a recruiting standpoint, I, I think. So uh, I think that's a, a big plus, obviously, Shannon Dawson in this offense. And just the allure of, hey – It's got to work now. Tyler Van Dyke is – we're all starting to expect this bounce back. It it just is sort of a stars-aligning feel for X to to come back to South Florida for his his last year of of college football because it does, for him, feel like a make-or-break type of year. So if you do break out and have a you know a 1,000-yard season in the ACC, obviously that's going to do a lot for for your draft stock given his natural – you know, frame, athleticism, and traits that made him a blue chip recruit coming out of high school a few years back. Another transfer portal target to watch uh, who was visiting yesterday as well, probably still is, Oklahoma cornerback Jaden Davis, who's another South Florida kid, St. Thomas Aquinas, former four-star recruit. This is another one, John, in my opinion, Miami would make a lot of sense for. 100%. You know, Jaden brings just considerable experience. 50 games appeared in. I remember as a true freshman, he was getting some run uh, on a good Oklahoma team. Uh, he's he's dealt with a lot there, uh, survived multiple coaching changes uh, on the defensive side and obviously head coaching wise a couple years back. Actually jumped in the portal briefly 
uh, when Lincoln Riley left, but he ended up sticking with the Sooners and, and he started more than 20 games as a result. Uh, like you said, St. Thomas kid. Uh, so naturally bringing guys back home is, is kind of a theme we're seeing with Miami in the portal. Saw it a lot last year with, with Dade and Broward uh, natives in particular, you know, Daryl Porter, uh, Henry Parrish, guys like that coming back to South Florida. Uh, but this makes sense schematically, I think, as just as much as Henderson does. I think we've seen the Canes attack the portal for all sorts of defensive back help. But I don't know if there's a true like nickel type that they have brought in. And I think that is where Davis, with that considerable experience and coverage ability, could really help uh, Miami from a secondary standpoint. Uh, grad transfers and upperclassmen are going to be prevalent throughout the secondary, especially at corner with, with the great safeties that are returning to Miami. So it would be almost fitting to cap it with another um, cornerback through the portal that that has a lot of experience to his name. Uh, it worked well for Porter last year. Could see the same for for Davis, maybe even to a higher degree if, if he were to stick with Miami. Uh, I, I do hear a little bit more buzz with other schools comparatively Henderson it feels like all Miami we we are told something could happen soon he's a very reserved kind of guy you know might not even tweet it you know before mm -hmm. he commits so maybe that that has some um, bat signal influence there I think with Davis there's a little bit more interest that we we know of North Carolina a couple other schools that are, are trying to reinforce their secondary uh, again the profile of of versatility and experience in the secondary is something that every school will covet this time of year. Uh, so I think timing wise, the sooner the better from the Miami perspective. Again, he's, he's already on campus for an official. So he'll spend multiple days in Coral Gables. And uh, you just wonder if, if he makes a decision before he leaves campus before the next visit. So uh, either way, I, I think Miami's got to make a move with one or both of these guys relatively shortly because this portal window is about to close here in a few days. And we know the recruitment of those guys in the portal is going to get even more hectic after that point. So sooner the better for both of these two. And those are both areas of need. Miami could use quality depth in the defensive secondary and definitely can still use it. I, I feel better about Miami's current receivers after going through spring, but they could still use a guy like Xavier Henderson there. But I, I still think the biggest need is defensive tackle. I want to find out where Miami stands with a big time hitter. And that goes, whether you're talking baseball or football, uh, Tywon Malone is still in that portal. How close could Miami be to getting something done there? Keep it locked right here. John Garcia is with us on Locked on Canes. Guys, I know you've been keeping it locked to Built Bars because you've been looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories. You need the best tasting pro protein bar ever built. You got to try this. If you're like me, you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste. I've got just the thing for you, Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and they taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing that you're not going to think that they're good for you, but you got to try this. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream. I just had a cookies and cream puff bar this morning. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is they are healthy, only 130 calories, just four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now, you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering Built Bars at Built.com. You can still do that with our promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% off. Now you can also get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club, where you can still get your specialty flavors at Built.com. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Built Bars. If you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors like brownie batter puff and churro puff. You can thank me later because I love me some Built Bars. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. Thank you to the everydayers. And guys, Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Special is here, and it's bigger than ever. Follow along all 32 teams' first pick in six episodes, ultimate mock draft experience that only Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts. We are joined by Locked On Network recruiting expert John Garcia, Jr. Uh, John, Miami needs uh, a defensive tackle. We've seen some come off the board, including uh, Jeffrey Emba in the last couple of days who went to Purdue. Uh, but uh, I, the guy that I've really, really, really wanted is still on the board, and that's Tywone Malone from Ole Miss. What's happening there? 
Yeah, he's confirmed uh, since joining the portal, and, and it's somewhat of a surprising move uh, just last week. He has confirmed that Miami has been in touch. No word yet on a visit. I, I think that's the the logical next step here, not only because, hey, it's always great to get guys to, to South Florida, especially this time of year, but there's there's not a lot of Miami traction when he was in high school um, from, from Malone's perspective. So I do think that that needs to be a true impression that he gets uh, from down south in, in Coral Gables. We know USC, Texas A&M, a couple other schools are very interested. I think there's probably some USC buzz, and they were in it back in high school, so that would make some sense. Penn State, same situation, recruited him out of high school, hosted him. He's a Jersey guy, so he was able to, to get over there relatively easily. So, uh, But we know Miami has ties uh, up in that area of the country as well, starting at the top with Mario Cristobal. So we'll see if Miami can grab a visit, but Malone has confirmed that uh, there, there have been initial conversations, so we'll see what the next steps look like. I get the sense that he's on a bit of a longer trajectory yeah. than the Hendersons and the Jaden Davises of the world that we expect to commit really at any day, uh, any day now here going forward, especially in Henderson's case. I think Malone is, is trying to figure things out uh, from a broad perspective, thinking that he's got a lot of time because there's just not a lot of big athletic guys like him in the portal right now. I want to talk about some 2024 targets. Uh, here's one that just put Miami in his top five. St. Thomas Aquinas running back, star running back, Jordan Lyle. He's a four-star. Um, but I look at his top five, and, man, there's some heavy hitters in there, John. <laughs> this is this is not going to be easy for Miami. Uh, so Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, and Florida State join Miami in Jordan Lyle's top five. Um, where do you think Miami might stand here? And, you know, second part of that, if they can find a way to make this happen with Lyle, I mean, how could he compliment a guy like Chris Wheatley Humphrey if they come in in the same class? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think this has been one that time has favored Miami for at the end of, of the state championship run at St. Thomas last year into the new year. The buzz was really elsewhere from Florida State. Penn State had buzz at one point, was surprised to see them not make yeah. his top five. Uh, got up to Ohio State in March, but took a trip back to Coral Gables, back home in April that really started to change things. He was able to watch spring practice and get a feel for just the turnover that is going down on this roster. Because if you look at all the other teams in his top group, you could tell, hey, structure, stability, winning those are going to be elements that Jordan considers ahead of a decision. Uh, the good news for Miami, he got a great impression this spring and feels like the arrow is very much pointed up. Um, and there is also a sense that he's not very close to making a decision. So if Miami needs to show something to improve its standing for Lyle, it looks like they'll have that opportunity before he makes a, a verbal commitment. So the on-field product could be at play here. And, and, and you understand it. The kid's used to winning. He's a St. Thomas guy, a bunch of rings already at his disposal. They'll be the favorites again in 2023. Uh, but that, that April visit, I think, really shifted things and put Miami on a much higher note for Lyle, which, which is a big deal because he's really good. Number five running back in the country via on three. Blue chip across the board. 11 yards per carry last year. I mean, just... We, we think of St. Thomas, and we know it's kind of an embarrassment of riches, yeah. but these guys are still having to go out there and do it. And Lyle made it look really easy at times in 2022, so you could see why his stock is continually on the rise. But look, a lot of these other programs have backs already on board, so you wonder how much that could factor in. Ohio State has two already uh, verbally committed. Uh, and in terms of if he does pick Miami, how he could balance out with his uh, fellow Broward back, I think they would complement each other well. Um, Wheatley Humphrey's more of a burner, straight line, decisive type. And I think Lyle can do a little bit of everything, more balanced, more conventional, unbelievable vision and lateral ability. Uh, he, he can run. Uh, he can blow the top off of a defense. All of that, of course, uh, 11 yards of carry emphasizes it. But the vision and lateral ability really stand out with Lyle, who's right, right around 200 pounds uh, or so. So you expect him to be a you know, bigger, more physical back on top of it. So really like what he does in between the margins, obviously that would translate very well in a spread scheme, like with uh, what Miami's going to operate with under Shannon Dawson. So I, I do think they would complement each other. And 
it'd be two cycles in a row now that, again, this theme of keeping guys home would really be emphasized at the running back position in particular. It would be, you know, the number three and number four straight uh, Broward County guy uh, mm-hmm. at the position as well, following uh, the, the 2023 signees, Fletcher there and, and Chris Johnson from Dillard. Here's one of the weird things about following recruiting. Sometimes when these players come out with their finalists, you know, top 10, top five, you see Miami in there and I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize we were recruiting this guy. How, like, how did Miami even make the finalists? And, and that happened with, uh, at least in my opinion, with four-star athlete Bronte Johnson. I think they call him Tay. Um, you know, he, who I, I think projects out to either be a wide receiver or a safety. I'm not sure if he's leaning to one of those or the other, John, but, uh, I hadn't really heard a lot about Miami being connected with him before I saw him drop Miami in a top 10. Yeah. Uh, surprised me too. There's really not a whole lot of, of known connection between Tay out of Indiana and, and Miami, uh, not even, you know, he didn't even tweet the offer out. Right. So not even mm. sort of the baseline, of, of what we follow from, from a broad recruiting perspective. There's no record of him visiting Coral Gables either, um, which I think is a good thing because if you're a, a top 10 program under consideration for a blue chipper like that without a visit, without considerable communication as far as we know, clearly there's some affinity uh, towards Miami. And, and look, this is not a low-level kid who's just like, hey, let me throw in my 10 best offers as my top 10. No, this is right. a big-time recruit out of the Midwest that's got all of the Big Ten after them. Notre Dame's in there. Colorado's in there, too. Uh, and then Miami is kind of the outlier, I think, uh, from a regional and conference perspective. So I do think that there's probably time going forward uh, in this recruitment, not something we're going to see come to a conclusion soon because Tay's got a lot of things to consider, not only receiver versus DB, but big-time basketball player as well, right? So I, I think there's a lot for him to consider throughout the process. And if that does become a factor down the line, that actually helps Miami based off the last couple of years and and what uh, Jim Laranega and company are doing there on the hardwood. So that'll be fascinating to track. Um, And I think it kind of reemphasizes where Miami's brand is right now. That offer is carrying some weight. And the thought from recruits is that the arrow is pointed up and this thing is going to get corrected under Cristobal, especially from a talent perspective. Coming up next, while Miami is very much in the mix with some of the best defensive linemen in the country, who do they actually have the best chance to land on this really big, impressive list? Keep it locked right here. John Garcia Jr. is with us on Locked on Canes. Thank you so much to the everydayers who make Locked on Canes your first listen. And, you know, we're on six, sometimes seven days a week, sometimes multiple times per day. And in fact, for the everydayers, you don't have to wait more than a few hours before we're scheduled tonight to talk with Judd Anderson. Uh, Miami Hurricanes quarterback commit is going to join us this evening. I'll talk about his recruitment, why he decided Miami is the place for him and how he sees himself in the Shannon Dawson offense. So that should be very good. Expect that to drop around 8.30 p.m. tonight because I'm going to be doing some local radio till about 8.15 and then Judd Anderson tonight at 8.30. Uh, John Garcia is with us. And one of the uh, the great questions we got from our subtext chat was about defensive linemen, defensive tackles specifically, because, John, I've, I've seen Miami very much in the mix for guys like Justin Scott, who was on campus recently, David Stone, who spent like the entire month of March, it seemed, on Miami's campus, but there's a lot of competition for him, like from Oklahoma. Uh, Aiden Breland, Kamari and Franklin, T.A. Cunningham, who's been trending towards Miami, and he's going to be transferring over uh, to Miami Central, which is a good thing. So, you know, when you hear names like that, and and maybe there's others you want to throw into the mix, uh, who do you think Miami has the best shot of landing in that group? Yeah, it's, first of all, a great group. Uh, It's a great class on the defensive interior nationally in in 24. And naturally, Miami's in the mix for a lot of these guys. I think from a a timing standpoint, look, um, David Stone and Justin Scott each spent so much time at the U this spring that Miami's kind of come out of nowhere for both of them. Now, I don't know if Miami leads for either. Uh, I, I would say Scott more than Stone just from a buzz standpoint, but Uh, Those are both national recruits, four or five star recruits that have a heavy offer list and a lot of visits uh, both before Miami and and since uh, those trips went down. So I think Miami's improved their standing for those two. But I don't know how comfortable I would I would say to projecting either 
to the Canes at this point. I think Notre Dame for Justin Scott is, is still going to gain a lot of traction. Stone just went back to Oklahoma, his home state. First time he checked out a, a spring game and he came out of that really positive. So I'd probably go with the guy who's transferring to Miami Central. I think yeah. it's T.A. Cunningham, uh, a guy who even before that was, was very much linked to Miami, a bunch of visits, another guy who took multiple trips this spring in particular, uh, originally from the state of, of Georgia, went out to California last year. Now he's coming back to Florida in the South to play uh, for, for the Miami Central Rockets, who are, are going to be loaded once again, kind of the St. Thomas of, of Dade County, if that makes sense. So, yeah, he'll be a lot closer to the U. Uh, he, he has bl been blown away by these trips. One of the two unofficials he took, you know, he told uh, our friend Brian Smith that was the best visit he'd been on. You know, so I think T.A. has been pretty open about Miami. And now he's going to be uh, what 25 minutes or so, maybe less from campus uh, on an everyday basis. So I do think uh, Miami's got a great shot to now keep him home as, as a local recruit, even though just about a month ago they were talking about bringing him across the country from Southern California. So that's the low hanging fruit, but it would still be a big deal for Miami. Someone on our subtext chat wanted me to ask you uh, at tight end about Caleb Odom uh, from Georgia, who I, I had a chance to meet him in person a few weeks ago. And I, I was trying like not to too, like be too obvious that I'm like trying to be like, hey, Miami's great, right? Like, hey, this is really, really <laughs> nice campus, nice weather down here. Like, yeah, I was trying not to like, you know, I, I don't know if I did it, if it would be tampering because I don't work for the university, but I, I was trying not to be too shameless about it. I'll just say that, John. And, you know, Caleb, uh, he he looks the part, that's for sure. Where do you think things are trending in his recruitment? Yeah, this is a, a big deal. Uh, a lot of programs want in on, on Caleb Odom, kid out of Carrollton, Georgia, 1,000-yard jumbo receiver type. Yeah. Last year, uh, a lot of schools think he'll mold into a tight end. Looks like a basketball player right now at about 6'6", 210 pounds. Uh, and, yeah, Miami's done a really nice job in this recruitment to, to hang around because early on a lot of Georgia buzz Auburn is in there. Um, Ole Miss, I would say in the sec might be doing one of the best jobs. There's some confidence with Lane Kiffin's program, but, but since the new year and this spring, once again, we're seeing these trips paying off for the hurricanes. And I think Caleb Odom is very high on the hurricanes. He told me he's going to take an official visit in the month of June and really lit up talking Mario Cristobal in particular and just how he in, envisions the program and, and prioritizing a tight end like Miami has always sort of been known for. So I think there's a desire to get back to that. Will Mallory getting drafted this week will help some of that perception. And, and I think a lot of folks are going to start viewing Caleb Odom in that type of mold. Will Mallory was a great wide receiver at the high school level that we watched, you know, uh, tear up defensive backs at the power five or future power five defensive backs. Caleb Odom does the same things on Friday night. So that sell, that comparison, I think, is one that resonates with Caleb because it's something that Miami has seen through and it'll you know culminate Thursday or Friday, more likely with with Mallory's selection. I can't wrap this up before asking you about another wide receiver uh, who, you know, feel like I have to ask you about this guy every single week. And that's Jojo trader five star out of Chaminade. Now, you know, obviously he's very tight with Jeremiah Smith, who's an Ohio state commit, but he also seems very tight with chance Robinson. Who's now a Miami commit. And, you know, seems at times Miami has been trending for Jojo. Uh, what do you think is happening there? Yeah, I still think Miami's in great shape. Um, I, I know talking to JoJo two weekends ago that he's in no rush, so don't expect anything anytime soon. But this is where we talked about it earlier, the Kevin Beard impact. We're going to feel it more from the Miami perspective with the JoJo traders of the world. And, and we just saw it with Chance Robinson, who you just mentioned, was really trending elsewhere earlier in his recruitment. Georgia, Florida, Florida State, a lot of schools felt really good about Chance until Beard got the Miami job. And Miami closed the gap and eventually closed the deal for the commitment. I think with Trader, it's similar, where Miami was maybe hanging around second, third, fourth. And then after Beard sort of you know bought into the traction for JoJo, who wants to play receiver, by the way. I know we all love him as a corner down the line. Yeah, JoJo wants to play offense, so he's going to play offense at the collegiate level. Um, but since Beard took over, I think Miami has surged to, at worst, second place there's this thought that ohio state because of jeremiah because of brian hartline and that pedigree is going to run away with this verbal commitment and, and it's just not the case in fact I've, I've been told more recently that 
the in-state schools are feeling better and better here, Miami I and agree. Florida State. So I think it could be kind of an old-fashioned Miami-FSU battle in the end for Trader, but that's the thing. We know there's a long way to go in this recruitment. He'll take official visits to um, all, all these schools we're talking about and Florida. Florida's in there uh, as well. So it, it's really a matter of sticking with one of the big three or you know, following the, the receiver trend to Ohio State, which anybody would understand given their history. Well, huge thank you and shout out to John Garcia Jr. Want to remind everybody, if you want to keep up with the conversation, basically 24 hours a day, uh, you can join our exclusive subtext community here on Locked on Canes. You get SMS messages right from me. I drop, you know, breaking news. Sometimes Dono random balls. thoughts that pop into my head. <laughs> Dono, we dropped Dono balls in there. John is 100% <laughs> right. We, we've dropped a couple already this week on the subtext chat. So if you want to join, I am going to include a link in the show description below if you guys want to get in on that to join our subtext chat and john garcia jr thank you so much my friend enjoy the rest of your week likewise thanks for having me we'll talk to you guys again next time judd anderson gonna join later here on locked on canes part of the awesome locked on podcast network your team every day